as we begin to measure impact in a reliable, verifiable, comparable way for every company, we begin to create a race to the top because investors are looking for the companies that know how to deliver both profit and impact, hopefully maximizing both. Tesla could be an example of a company whose goal is not just to make money in the automobile industry, but to shift it away from the combustion engine as well. Now, when you provide that transparency, it changes the behavior of management. First of all, you begin to see, and we see it already in the Harvard effort I'm involved with, uh, the Impact Weighted Accounts Initiative at Harvard Business School. You begin to see that the companies that pollute more are worth less than their competitors. So that's because the ESG and impact money is shifting away from the companies that are doing harm. If you know ExxonMobil creates $39 billion of environmental damage a year from its operations alone without the damage from the oil it pulls out of the ground, and Shell delivers $23 billion of damage and BP 14, who are you going to invest in? And so you begin to change the goalposts for business. Just making money means it's not enough. And if you want to attract the consumers and the talent and the investors, you better do good and do well at the same time. And actually, there are three major forces that lead us to make more money as a result of this approach than if we just optimized risk and return. Can you talk a little about what those three are? I know you cover them in the book, and one is tapping into an entirely new size of market, finding these underserved areas or gaps in the market. What are the others? So... The first one is this massive change of values I referred to. So if you want to get customers for your product more easily, and if you want to attract talent, and if you want investors to seek you out, if you've got an impact dimension to your business model, that's a big advantage for you. And it's a competitive advantage relative to your competitors who may have been established much longer, but harm the environment or people as they make money. So you can eat into their market share and eventually overtake them, as Tesla has started to do. The second major force is the force of technology. New technologies today enable us to deliver impact in ways humanity could never consider previously. So whether it's telemedicine or teleeducation or a myriad different ways of applying technology today, we can, as you say, reach much wider populations than ever before, reduce the price level of our service and build a faster growing, more profitable company than if we did the traditional thing of focusing on the high margin customer and trying to make the most money out of a small number of customers. The third one is the transparency on impact. To the extent that we are going to see companies publishing impact-weighted financial accounts, investors and consumers and talent and governments are going to be able to compare the performance of companies and capital will shift to those who are doing the best job of optimizing these three dimensions, risk, return, and impact. Now, when you take these three forces together, if you're an entrepreneur, it leads you to think, well, how can I manage to create a business model where the more impact I deliver, the more money I make? 